I'm going to turn this Excel chart here into a publication ready high DPI picture using Julia. So uh, my name is Chris, I'm an engineer who's uh, previously had lots of experience programming but I'm new to Julia and learning how to use some of the features of this, of this programming language. One of the problems I came across recently was that I needed a this graph in particular to be high DPI, 300 DPI, to put into a journal for publication. However, I couldn't figure out an easy way to do that in Excel so I thought why not use new Julia skills, open up Julia, import the data, uh, plot the data and then save the plot. So that's what I'm going to take you through today. Step one being to convert this, to read in this Excel file into Julia. Step two being to set up the plot in Julia. We're going to use the plots package here. And step three to save that as a uh, file that can then be uploaded with the paper to the journal. Okay, what we're going to do first is in the Excel file to create a new sheet so that this, so that we're not modifying the original data. This is something medical that I was helping uh, publish for a medical journal. So we're going to copy this to a new sheet. There, we're going to delete the graph from the new sheet. I might call it something easier like for Julia. Uh, one thing I did notice in Julia is that it gets much easier to work with data tables if your column headers don't have any spaces in them. And I'll show you why later on. But so we, we've got our table here, our, our data that we're going to plot. We're going to the header columns for each one, the header for, the, for each of the columns and remove the space. So remove the space and remove the space. And also to remove lines that are not numbers. So in this case, we've got, oh, this is an empty row. So remove the empty row and fill in the blank numbers. So this will give, this will make it easier for the plots package to plot. Now save that, control S. So what I've got now with the Excel sheet is, with the Excel workbook, is a separate sheet of my data for Julia. I've saved it as this figure1.xlsx and I've sort of looked ahead and, and saved it to a folder where I know the Julia REPL is looking for it. Now to find out that folder, if you type in PWD, the Julia REPL will tell you where it's looking for files. So, excellent. So it's, it's this uh, C uses Chris sample folder in my case. Now I set that up when I installed Julia. If you're curious how I installed Julia, check out the link below. But, uh, so what I've done is save this figure one XLSX to this sample folder. So jumping back to the REPL. Now, if you're using the Julia interpreter, the REPL, then it might be a bit different. Uh, I'm using this Atom one and I set up Atom with Julia and Juno as per the instructions in that video I recorded earlier. So the first step to do now is to uh, tell Julia we're going to use the Excel files, the data tables and the plots package. And we do that uh, like this. So using Excel tables, Excel tables is the package I'm using to read in Excel. Uh, data tables is the package of, of data tables and plots as well. Uh, whoops, forgot to put in commas. So you see I'm new to Julia uh, and I make some mistakes like this every now and then but I'm learning as well and hopefully Excel tables not found. Oh, because it's called Excel files. <laughs> uh, so like I said, I'm new to Julia. Uh, hopefully you'll bear with me as I go through some of these mistakes. It will hopefully help you prevent making the same mistakes. So uh, as it's uh, opening up those packages, as registering those packages. Uh, I've noticed this takes a while. Uh, if you're not sure, or it gives you an error like this where the package is not available and it tells you to add it, I made a separate video about how to add packages in the Julia REPL. So I've left a link to that down below. Feel free to check it out. Uh, it'll go through uh, installing a package for the first time and then using it like this. So unfortunately, Julia can be a bit slow at these things. If it's the first time using a package, it will take a bit longer to do this using package process. So hopefully that's loading up now, still not ready. Yeah, so check out that video or leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any questions or queries about how to do this, leave a comment uh, and I'll get back to you and answer and see if I can help you out there. Oh, I'm learning myself as well. So it'll be a good experience for both of us. Okay, so it looks like it's finished uh, registering using those packages and we're ready to use all the functions that those packages contain. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is assign a new variable dt to be the data 
in the Excel file. So we're going to open up our Excel file. Users, Chris, my name's Chris by the way, uh, sample, uh, figure1.xlsx. Remember this double slash pattern? It's just an escape character so that Julia doesn't uh, misinterpret what's in the string. Uh, and we're going to load it from our for Julia sheet for Julia. And that should read in the data table. So hopefully that reads in all the data in this Excel sheet into our DT variable. So this is a plot that I had to do for a medical journal recently. The requirement was to have it in a high DPI, uh, as is the case for most journal publications. However, I couldn't figure out how to get Excel to do that. Since I was learning Julia, I figured may as well give it a go in Julia. So the, what we're gonna do is after this data table is read in from the Excel file, and I'm surprised it's taking this long, uh, we're going to set up our plots and we're going to then save it as, we can save it as a PNG or a PDF. And there are some other options as well. I think SVG, I might, I might try SVG in this video too. Uh, though if your journal requires uh, EPS or uh, TIFF, then there are some, There, you, it is possible to do it, uh, but there are some little extra steps to do in Julia that I'll cover in a different video. So leave a comment if you wanna see that, and I can go into more depth on how to uh, plot EPS or TIFF in Julia as well. In this one, we're going to focus on a high DPI PNG, and we're also gonna try out a PDF and SVG. So uh, I'm really surprised this is taking so long to load. When I did the test for this video, it certainly didn't take this long. And it turns out what I did was forget to press the closing bracket, so I'll close the bracket, and hopefully that'll load in the data table to the file now. Uh, notice that I made two opening brackets, but only one closing one. So what happened there was that some of the information inside the Excel file had uh, snuck in, snuck. it was hidden in, in different columns. So when, when uh, Julia reads in, when uh, Excel files reads in, it reads in all the data from hidden columns as well. And I uh, censored some of this information to protect the doctors and the paper authors involved. So uh, we're just focusing on the plot in this one. And I just jumped ahead to getting all that data into the data table. Uh, simply put, just run the command dt equals data table, load the file path and the sheet name, and the data table's read in from the file. So after we've read in the data table, it's time to set up some of the details for our plot. We're going to set up uh, different line styles to match. So we want different line styles like this. Uh, we want uh, different... We want a title, we want uh, labels on these like this. And we we're aiming for at least to convey the same information uh, as what's on this graph, even if it's in a slightly different location. So the first thing we're going to do is just remember that the order is this cumulative CM, then HM, and then TCM. Okay, because what we're going to do is set up uh, vectors with our information in it. So we're gonna set up a labels vector first, which contains cumulative Oops, it's got to be strings. So cumulative CAM, this is going to be in the legend. So these labels are going to form the legend. Cum and that's why I'm putting the space back in. Cumulative HM, cumulative TCM. Okay, there we go. And we've got the labels. Next one is uh, line style. So line styles equals, uh, what did we have? We had... Okay, for line styles, uh, we're going to use solid, dash, and dot. So we can change those, it will correspond. So CAM will be solid, HM will be dash, and TCM will be dot. Uh, we can shift those around to match the, the plot if need be, though I think I've done that there. Anyway, uh, so that's our line styles. Then next is our uh, label, uh, line widths. So I noticed when I was preparing this that sometimes the plot, uh, the, the line widths didn't quite match. They didn't scale up as we scaled up the DPI, which I'll get to in a second. So for a high DPI picture, we wanted the lines to really come through. So I'm going to set a line widths vector as well. This is the width of each line in pixels. So I found that three was a good option. I think one or two is the default, I can't remember. Okay. So now that we've got our, uh, vector, our vectors of options ready, we're going to set up our plots, which our first 
thing is the y axis. Our first argument is the uh, x axis. Then we're going to put in our data. So cumulative. Oops. So this is where the uh, space came in from the Excel. If you remember, I suggested uh, removing the space in each of the column headers so that you can use this shortcut when it comes to here, cumulative CAM, dt.cumulativehm, dt.cumulativetcm. There we go, that's our data, oops. Uh, ah, I left a comma in there, which I shouldn't do. And uh, that's a space, okay, comma. Then our next argument is label. So the data label equals our vector labels. Then our line style equals line styles. Then our line width equals, I've got them written down on next to me here, line widths. Then we do, uh, so this is our opportunity to set the DPI higher. Now, I recommend going higher than the recommended DPI in the journal. It doesn't, when we're doing a plot like this in Julia, it doesn't vastly increase the file size like you'd think. Uh, this simple plot I found between 100 and 600 kilobytes. And the journal submission I'm doing this for allowed 40 megabytes for this file. So uh, what I found is that uh, set the DPI higher in case you need to scale it down later on because I couldn't figure out how to uh, set the exact DPI for the picture. However, uh, it was quite a big and it could be scaled down to the journal size. So I'd recommend going with a higher DPI. I went with 600 when I was preparing this. The requirement for the journal is only 300. So I've set the DPI to 600 there. Uh, we're going to set the title, which will be uh, increasing awareness of CAM, HM, and TCM. Then we're going to set the X label. There are more options on how you can get this to appear. Uh, however, it's uh, a bit more in depth than I intended to do in this video. This was supposed to be a quick guide on how to uh, go from Excel to our high DPI plot quickly. I just happen to have Julia available as my tool to do it. If you want more details on some of the depth of these options, please leave a comment and I'll see what I can do in terms of putting another video together to go into that. So X label is a shortcut, uh, which is obviously the X label for the graph and the Y label as well. There are many more options. You can do formatting, colors, lots of different things like that. So please let me know if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. So Y label being the counts and that's it. So this will produce our plot in the plots pane below once it gets around to plotting. Hopefully if I haven't made any mistakes, it should come up with a nice plot here in a second. Okay, uh, so what's happened? Okay, so what's happened there? Uh, you see I've made a mistake with the labels. If you come up here, I left this uh, comma in, which meant it was a, um, a vertical array like this rather than the horizontal one. So it's applied that label to all of them. Let's change our labels back. Just do this quickly. It's kind of out of scope for the video. You'll see I'm used to syntax from other languages where you put a comma between them. However, to support easy two dimensional matrices in Julia, they've chosen to just use space as the separator. Okay, there we go. And now we run our plot again and hopefully that'll update there, yep. Okay, so to save the plot, we've we've got our last plot used here in the yeah, in Julia. So to save this plot, all we simply do is call the PNG call a function called PNG. It will save as a PNG file with whatever file name we give it. So let's say figure one, enter, uh, and that's saved it. That's a shortcut to save it as a PNG file. Okay, so now we jump over to the folder where it's saved and we open it up. And hopefully that opens up in a second. Yep, and there we go. So that's our graph. Uh, you can see that the lines, actually the lines are a bit thick. Uh, this is that three uh, pixel width that we used. I used one and two when making this video. It may be a bit better. So anyway, that's how to open it up as a PNG. Uh, let's do the same. So we there's a shortcut in the plots package PDF. So we can call it figure one again. This will come out as figure one.pdf. 
Okay, the PDF didn't, there's no shortcut PDF function like that. So we can use the save fig function. This time it chooses the output based on the file name. So we'll call it figure1.pdf. So save fig there. Uh, that should save the last plot in the plots pane here. So we'll go to our sample figure1.pdf. Excellent, open that up just to make sure it works. Perfect, so that's working there. Uh, now we can also try SVG. So save fig figure1.svg. Okay, so that's saved as SVG. And now we jump over here, open up our SVG. Uh, it's, oops. Yep, okay, so my computer set to open up in this uh, GIMP program, which is a good way to look at vector graphics. I use it to convert my vector graphics to different uh, files. So we open up our plots there. Uh, now it did have a DPI setting, but I didn't use it properly. Uh, and that's the, the graph there open as an SVG. So uh, that's, that's all there is to it. Uh, it's quite simple to go from an Excel file to a plot that's ready for publication using Julia. So Julia can read in the Excel file, can prepare the plot, uh, in terms of title, axes, uh, legend, and then to uh, output the plot to save it as an appropriate DPI sized picture. So uh, if, I, if you'd like to see anything else about this, please leave a comment below. Otherwise hit that subscribe or that like button and I'll see you in the next video.